Good morning. Coming up here on a Tuesday, the deadly dust storm in Illinois. At least six people killed, dozens of vehicles piled up. They had 40 mile per hour winds just combined with an unfortunate circumstance where the farm and the fields had just been cleared. We're right there on the scene. We'll be tracking also the newest threat uh, headed for that area. Then this morning, the debt limit showdown. What a default could mean for Social Security, military salaries, and 401ks. And then a new study on women and heart health and the new report out this morning about the loneliness epidemic in America. Dr. Ashton is here to discuss it all. You don't want to miss it on GMA. At fashion's biggest night, the cat is out of the bag. Mr. Leto! This year's theme, an homage to the late Karl Lagerfeld, known for his signature black and white designs. Janelle Monet in head to toe black and white. Kristen Stewart, Vanessa Hudgens, and Jenna Ortega sticking to that color scheme too. Giselle Bunchen in all white for her first time back to the Met Gala as a single lady. And our own Rhiannon Alley, gorgeous in all black. Lagerfeld also known for his pearls. Serena Williams sporting her own on the carpet. Lizzo too. And Kim Kardashian wearing 50,000 freshwater pearls. Her dress took its makers a thousand hours to complete. But this year's most show-stopping moments inspired by Karl Lagerfeld's beloved cat, Chopin. Chloe Feynman carrying a cat clutch. Doja Cat transforming her own face to look like her namesake animal. And Lil Nas X fully feline, a bedazzled cat to the tip of his whiskers. And Jared Leto dressed up as Chopette herself. The cat, however, officially declining her invites to the Met Gala on Instagram Monday, writing in part that she preferred to stay peacefully and cozy at home. We pay tribute to my daddy every day since his parting, and we are very moved to see one more day dedicated to him. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Now 557, let's take a quick look at Transguide right now. We're think, seeing things flowing great in both directions at I-35 and Ben's Engelman. We have one hour of news, weather, and traffic next. Now at 6, San Antonio police are investigating an overnight shooting that left a teenager hurt. Well, we're now learning about how it happened. Plus, they cannot produce new episodes without writers. Overnight, thousands of film and TV writers go on strike. What it could mean for your favorite shows and movies. And outside with live cam this morning, lots of humidity, very warm out there. 68 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, May 2nd. Thanks for joining us. Well, we hope you had a good start to your week. Uh, the weather was beautiful yesterday, but now we need to prepare for that humidity. Let's jump into Tuesday. Mike is here with an update on that humidity. And where do we go from here regarding humidity and our chances of rain for the week? Up up and temperatures will go up. So okay. I don't know if that's necessarily good news, but the great news. Yeah, we do have uh, some more rain chances coming on in here. Bad news. Some of those storms uh, can be on the strong, potentially severe side. That's not going to be for a couple of days. First of all, this morning starting off and you can see just sort of that haze kind of sitting over over the city right now. The Fog, which has been getting thicker over the past couple of hours right around Gonzales, is now starting to spread westward. Seguin's got some fog, a little bit more in New Braunfels. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this around Randolph, New Braunfels, some of the spots that usually get a little foggy, Pleasanton, even around Stinson as the morning rolls on. But for right now, we're doing pretty good. And as you go out, there may be a little bit of mist out there as well. Um, as far as any rain, this is all just kind of some, some clutter around here. But you see these little spots that actually move just a few little light sprinkles off to the west only show that because it's not really anything of any consequence just don't be surprised if there is just this little sprinkly shower out there 68 here in town mid 60s hill country everybody is very warm averaging about five six seven degrees above the respective normals and those numbers went up overnight as expected dew points are well up into the 60s so again you get above 60 degrees and that's when you really start to uh, to feel it. And you'll notice it when you step outside. Low amounts of all the allergens. Of course, the updated count's going to come out in about uh, an hour and a half. So throughout the rest of the morning, steady temperatures. Got that chance for a couple of sprinkles here and there. Just a mention of it. Not anything of any consequence. If it happens, it's just going to be enough to make the roads kind of damp. So watch that. We'll be at 78 at noon. Top off today at 82, mostly cloudy. Again, I've got that 10% in there just for a stray little sprinkly shower. Pretty much take this forecast, 
put it into tomorrow. Then Thursday, that's when we're going to have to be on the lookout, especially late Thursday night for some of those stronger storms. Weekend forecast does include some rain as well. All that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, that big issue still yep. going on? Well, we are seeing some progress there, Mike, uh, but it looks like more trouble out there on the roadways for anyone that is waking up and has to head out in the next few minutes. Be on the lookout. A crash has been reported here at I-10. This is a shot from Escondido Creek. You can see uh, plenty of first responders out there. Not sure yet how many vehicles are involved or the extent of any or possible uh, or any injuries out there, but you see that we do have some hazard lights on as well. Very dark out there, but that appears to be a box trailer of some sorts. We'll get some work. Uh, we'll do some work and get some information on this, but I would say another area you may want to avoid or just be cautious of as the commute does get rolling. This has been reported at I 10 eastbound near loop 1604 close to the far east side of the county there, and you can really not see any buildup there from the map just yet, but it is getting busier. We know we have been tracking some other issues out there on the road. I do want to take a drive over here to that incident that we've been monitoring throughout the morning along the access road of I 35. Remember those northbound lanes have remained closed following an incident uh, that was reported late last night. In fact, Katrina Weber is live there now. Katrina, what's the latest update? Well, we heard from police about 20 minutes ago that the problem, the standoff had ended peacefully, but what has not ended is the closure uh, here of this access road. This is the northbound access road between Samsi and Riddiman that is closed, as well as the exit from 35 North to Riddiman Road, still closed. We have some video to show you that we took earlier from our roof cam on our vehicle. Uh, we were able to get on the other side of the highway, look over and see the car that was involved in this whole thing. This has been going on since after after 10 o'clock last night, police say they got a call about a possible accident, got out here and found that car stopped in the middle of the access road. It had not been involved in an accident, but the driver inside was refusing to come out of the car and refusing to move. A police say he made uh, threats at some points against officers, both in person and on the phone when they were talking to him. He also threatened to harm himself, but he did not make any threats against any other drivers. Police are not sure if he is armed or what the situation is, but for whatever reason, he sat there for hours uh, as police tried to convince him to move or to get out of the car. <clears throat> Just about 20 minutes ago, again, they told us that it had ended, that he was in custody, and it did end peacefully. But they said they're not sure how long this closure is going to be in effect. If you can, it's probably best to avoid the area. And please say, whatever you do, do not stop on the highway to try to look and see what is going on. Just keep going down the road if you have to pass by this area. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, a 14-year-old boy recovering after being shot in the leg overnight. It happened at just after midnight at the Costa Valencia Apartments. It's on the city's far west side on Old Highway 90. The 14-year-old shot just below the knee was taken to University Hospital. He's expected to be okay. San Antonio police say he claimed he was robbed by two men. However, SAPD did not find a crime scene. Meanwhile, a driver and a passenger both avoided serious injury after their truck was hit by a train late last night. San Antonio police say it happened just before midnight on some tracks near the intersection of Brady Boulevard, and that's not far from Frio City Road and Highway 90 on the city's west side. Now, police say a man was driving and there was a female passenger, and they both told officers that they were being tailgated by someone, and that's when they tried to cross the railroad tracks in a hurry, and while crossing, their truck was hit by a train. There were no reported injuries, and police say neither person was intoxicated. Just as she was about to get on a plane, San Antonio police arrested a woman who claimed she was held at gunpoint in connection with her husband's death. Marianne Demetro is charged with altering, destroying, or concealing a human corpse. She told police she was being held against her will Sunday after a man named Jose Alvarez shot her husband, killing him. She said all three of them were inside Alvarez's apartment on Medical Drive over on the northwest side. She originally told detectives she escaped the apartment and called to report her husband's murder. However, investigators now think she was trying to help Alvarez. She actually assisted the suspect in attempting to remove the body from the apartment. She was found uh, trying to clean up evidence inside the apartment. So with that information, the uh, homicide detectives got a warrant. Now, police caught Demetro at San Antonio International Airport trying to leave the city. Alvarez has been charged with murder. Police did not give a motive, but said Demetro and Alvarez had some kind of relationship. 
Topping your morning headlines, the massive manhunt continues for 38-year-old Francisco, Francisco Oropesa. He is accused of shooting and killing five of his neighbors in Cleveland, Texas, about an hour north of Houston. Police say Oropesa was shooting his AR-15 style rifle for fun when his neighbor asked him to stop because a baby was sleeping. He followed his neighbor back to his home and started opening fire in that home. Authorities have been looking for him since Friday. We do not know where he is. We don't have any tips right now to where he may be. An $80,000 reward is now being offered for information that leads to his arrest. Police say that Oropesa should be considered armed and dangerous. Governor Greg Abbott's office responded to criticism Monday after calling the five victims of the mass shooting illegal immigrants. A spokesperson for the governor said, quote, we regret if the information was incorrect and detracted from the important goal of finding and arresting the criminal, end quote. You can read more about the governor's response right now on KSAT.com. Happening today, the Federal Reserve is kicking off another two-day meeting. They are considering whether to raise interest rates again. Experts widely expect the Fed to announce another quarter-point boost to interest rates. This all comes as they try to bring inflation down even more when the meeting wraps up tomorrow afternoon. Well, now to Hollywood, where an important deadline has passed. Writers are now walking off the job, demanding better pay and benefits as their industry faces unprecedented change. ABC's Andrew Dempert has the new overnight developments. Overnight, more than 11,000 film and TV writers went on strike after the Writers Guild of America and a group representing TV networks and studios failed to agree on a contract. The first to feel the effects of the strike, late night comedy shows like Jimmy Kimmel Live. They cannot produce new episodes without writers. It may be a long time before viewers really feel the impact of of a strike because all the major players have such vast libraries of shows. The two sides are at odds over writers' pay for shows on streaming services, among other things. The writers say streaming's lack of a regular seasonal calendar has hurt their pay. Network series typically were 22 episodes or even more. Streaming series are 10, 8, sometimes even 6 or even 4 episodes. The last writer strike back in 2007 lasted 100 days, costing California's economy an estimated $2 billion. Experts say that strike boosted reality television, giving a rise to unscripted shows like Big Brother and The Apprentice. Maria, you're fired. But the impact of this new strike will go far beyond Hollywood and New York. Take Georgia, for instance, where movie and TV productions pumped more than $4 billion into the local economy last year. Georgia is a leader in the, in the world. We're a top three, typically, production uh, city. Uh, we're going to feel it more than most other markets and feel it you know, just as much as, as New York or L.A. would. The group representing TV networks and studios says it's committed to reaching a fair agreement. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. General Motors is laying off hundreds of contract workers. They're primarily from an engineering hub just outside of Detroit. Last month, GM said around 5,000 salaried employees had agreed to buyouts. Time now, 611 and 68 degrees for now. Still to come, a mother was attacked by a swarm of bees. She is being called a hero for rescuing her children. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. And after the break, what experts say you need to tell your kids about their bodies and boundaries. And outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up. We have more clouds around this morning, it would seem. Traffic looks good on 410. We'll talk to both Stephen and Mike coming up a little bit later in the newscast. Just about 6.15 now to an important message for parents. This morning we are talking about how you can protect your kids from sexual abuse by teaching them about body boundaries. ABC's Alexis Christopher is supposed to an expert who has some important advice. We want children out there to know that they are in control of who touches or sees their bodies. It's horrifying to think a child could be a victim of sexual abuse. But according to the American Association of Pediatrics, one in three girls and one in 20 boys will experience sexual abuse or sexual assault by the time they reach age 17. The AAP says kids who feel they are the boss of their own bodies are less likely to be sexually abused, and they're more likely to report anything concerning to a trusted adult. So how do you teach young ones about body safety and boundaries? Start with using proper terms for body parts. So instead of nicknames, to actually say the words of genitals, such as penis, vagina, vulva, and buttocks, 
This way kids know that that is a private part and it's inappropriate for someone other than maybe a parent or a physician to see or ask about them. Go over the difference between okay versus not okay touches. If their children do or see something that is inappropriate, that parents reinforce that and say, hey, that type of touching is not okay. Don't force affection. And at first this might be a little difficult for parents, but children should also be able to live in their own comfort zone and not be forced to hug or kiss anyone, even relatives. If children don't feel comfortable being in close physical presence with someone else, that's okay, and parents and caretakers should respect that. Explain the concept of consent. In popular media, we often think of consent as referring to sexual interactions, but it's broader than that. Consent also involves playful touching, hugs, kisses, grabbing, even if it's not meant to be something sexual at all. And encourage questions. It's important for all of us to regularly talk to children about all these topics and to have an open ear and let them know that they can come to you with any questions or concerns. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. It's now 617. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos about the incident off of I-10. Yes, uh, this crash was actually reported a few minutes ago, and you can see that we still have plenty of first responders out there this early in the morning. Folks, uh, you may want to watch out if you are seeing this out on the roadways, because right now it does appear we at least have two lanes that are blocked off at this hour, and we do see that some road flares are also in place. So first responders need some of that room to investigate the scene and clear things up. But let's hope everyone is doing okay. No word yet on any injuries or how many vehicles were involved. But I did notice that we do have some hazard lights out there in the distance, but very tough to make out because it's still dark, but we'll keep a very close eye on it. Keep in mind, this is I-10 eastbound near Loop 1604. As you are heading uh, out to Seguin, maybe you will see that incident that is taking place out there. So move over, slow down. But better news to report over here, as Katrina Weber mentioned, we did have a standoff that was actually taking place right there along I-35. The access road was actually closed off between Bamsey and Ritterman Road. Now, the good news now is the road has reopened and things ended peacefully, but we'll work to get some more information on on that particular incident, but it uh, looks like things have cleared up. Wide view of the map. Thankfully, things are still quiet right now. As you can see, lots of green on the screen, plenty of that construction. But other than that, uh, we have had a pretty our fair share of incidents this morning, but the latest now seems to be here along I-10 at Escondido Creek. This is a shot from TransGuide, and again, it does look like multiple lanes are blocked off. So let's make sure to give first responders plenty of room so that way they can get the job done safely. You got it. Yep. Thank you, Stephen. You bet probably don't need a jacket this morning. Yesterday we had some temperatures down in the low 50s around the area and as you are heading off to say the bus stop or going off to work this morning, yeah, I, I kind of doubt it. So temperatures are going to be staying in the mid to upper 60s around here. There's plenty of humidity and the thing with the these kind of temperatures, when it's so humid outside, then you go into the air conditioning. It's really cold. Then you got all that cold. moisture kind of, you know, <laughs> then you go back outside. Uh, it's not necessarily fog up your glasses kind of humidity yet, but uh, later on this afternoon, 82 high temperature. And that's where we were yesterday, just about a normal high. Uh, a stray shower is possible. I really wouldn't count on it, but, you know, just one or two of them. Don't be surprised if you see that out there. So at the end of the day, you may look like this. I love that picture. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it just <laughs> don't you wish you could just kind of like flop into a chair and just go to sleep like that sometimes? So, Absolutely. All the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right. Here we are looking, this is our South Cam looking up at the uh, skyline and well, at least we can see the lights of the skyline out there. There are a couple of uh, little sprinkly showers, some out to the west and then these few well down here to the south. And again, this is just to show that yet yeah, we will have a couple of uh, light little sprinkles around the area today. Visibility, New Braunfels has now dropped to six miles and one at Gonzales. That actually has improved a little bit, but this batch of fog has been sort of growing over the past couple of hours, moving in towards Seguin. If you're going out I-10, you're going to run into some of that. And again, watch it around New Braunfels, Randolph, Stinson, Pleasanton, a couple of spots that usually see fog somewhat first or as it continues to develop throughout the course of the morning. Everybody is uh, pretty consistent with temperatures and with dew points well up into the 60s right now. And these numbers are a good 15, 20, almost 25 degrees warmer, higher than what they were yesterday at this time, which means, yeah, the humidity definitely got pumped in here overnight. Cloud cover as well. That's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of today. And there's these little disturbances that are trying to uh, slide on in here. Got this huge storm complex off to the northeast of us in the Great Lakes. And yes, that is snow up there in parts of the Great Lakes. 
28 Bismarck, 38 in Cleveland right now. We're not done with winter as of yet, but for us, it's going to feel like early summer around here. Here's the computer model, and I want to jump ahead to Thursday. Got a couple of showers around here other than today, tomorrow, stray sprinkle, mist, drizzle in the morning. Thursday is the day when we'll have a few showers throughout the day. Then we go into Thursday night, and that's the better chance for a few stronger thunderstorms, maybe even a couple of severe ones as well. That'll be on out of here by early Friday morning. A stray shower on Friday, maybe overnight Friday night, but then also Saturday, we're going to have another chance for a few uh, strong to potentially severe storms. Here's the outlook from the Storm Prediction Center for Thursday, isolated to scattered severe storms. And again, this would be later on at night on Thursday. Forecast today, we are going to make it up into the upper 70s at noon. Uh, some mist drizzle around the area. Don't be surprised if there's a stray shower. It's not very likely at all. And then later on this afternoon, a high temperature up to 82. Again, with a stray shower tomorrow, identical just about to today, and then we get into Thursday. Better chance for a few showers here and there throughout the day, and then those potentially stronger storms later on in the afternoon, it, excuse me, in the evening hours, and then overnight. A couple of showers Friday and Saturday. We'll have a few uh, showers, thunderstorms around the area, and then just the scattered variety Sunday and Monday, but it's really going to get hot and humid this weekend. Yes, it will be. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough for a uh, running weather. <laughs> it's oh. The humidity, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Who would do that? We have time. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Yeah, yeah. You're working hard for all of us, Steph. 622, 68 degrees. Look out there with Trans Guide still in the situation over there at I 10 at Escondida. We're going to get an update with our Stephen Cabasas after the break. <laughs> Asthma isn't pretty. It's the moment when you realize that a good day is about to become a bad one. But then I remembered that the world is so much bigger than that with Trilogy. Because one dose a day helps keep my asthma symptoms under control. And with three medicines and one inhaler, Trilogy helps improve lung function so I can breathe easier for a full 24 hours. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trilogy contains a medicine that increases risk of hospitalizations and death from asthma problems when used alone. When this medicine is used with an inhaled corticosteroid, like in Trilogy, there is not a significant increased risk of these events. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase risk of thrush and infections. Get emergency care for serious allergic reactions. See your doctor if your asthma does not improve or gets worse. What a wonderful world. Ask your doctor about once daily Trilogy for asthma because breathing should be beautiful. In this morning's GMA first look, a chaotic bee attack. My daughter can't get in the car, she's being attacked by bees. The frantic rescue of a mother and her two children attacked by a swarm of bees during a photo shoot. The quick thinking of the mom, she picked up those kiddos, put them in the back of the car. Firefighters responding to the scene in rescue gear, carrying the children to safety in the fire truck, spraying water and foam into the swarm to subdue the bees. Overnight, GMA speaking to Arizona fire officials recounting that harrowing incident. She wasn't concerned with herself. She wasn't concerned with her own injuries. She, of course, wanted to protect her babies, which most moms would. And to have the foresight to pick them up and get them into the car under that much duress is really impressive. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you the one thing you should not do if you encounter a swarm of angry bees. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. President Biden inviting top congressional leaders to the White House for debt ceiling talks as the U.S. Treasury warns lawmakers to take action quickly. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with that story from Washington. For most of us this morning, no jacket required. The sunrise is trying to peek through those morning clouds. We'll talk to Mike in just one moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 2nd. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good morning so far. And yeah, no jacket required when you're outside, but maybe when you come into the AC, you might need like a sweater or <laughs> oh, yeah. a hoodie or something. This is the time of year when you walk into a restaurant that's got the AC cranking yeah. and yes. you're frozen. Yeah, and then you go back outside. And so anyway, uh, get used to it, I guess, because humidity is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the week. At least we can see all the uh, lights of the skyline, but you notice how it is kind of hazy looking out there with all the extra humidity. 
humidity that moved in overnight. 68 degrees. We've been holding steady for the past couple of hours. That number is at 65, the dew point, which yesterday at this time, it was around the area anywhere from, say, 15 to almost 25 degrees lower. So that's how much more humidity moved on in here. Easterly wind at 9 miles per hour. We do have some fog to deal with. Gonzales is back down to half mile visibility. This has been sort of growing and spreading westward. Seguin has fog. New Braunfels down to 6 miles. Nothing in the metropolitan area yet, but just be on the lookout for it over the next couple of hours. And we do have a couple of sprinkly showers, especially down there around Corpus Christi, uh, heading in toward Mathis right now. Maybe one or two of them out there in western portions of the hill country. So this is just showing that just watch out for a stray shower, a little sprinkly shower here and there, not only this morning, but even this afternoon, very small chance for it. 68 in town, mid 60s hill country, very consistent temperatures with the high humidity, with the cloud cover, and everybody is enjoying I say that tongue in cheek, a lot of humidity out there. We do have low amounts of all the allergens. The updated count's going to come out in roughly an hour or so. And throughout the rest of today, mostly cloudy. It is going to be humid. We'll be up in the low 80s, normal high temperature. A shower is possible. Then tomorrow, pretty much same situation. Get into Thursday, slightly better chance for showers throughout the day. And then we'll have some evening storms and late night and some of those could be on the strong potentially severe side and going into the weekend a couple of showers on Friday but also I think a better shot on Saturday and some of those potentially stronger storms on Saturday plus it is going to be hotter and staying really humid this weekend details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen we had some problems earlier this morning yeah. what's up now it still have some problems Mike unfortunately I 10 there Escondido Creek you can see those flashing lights out there folks remember this is a crash that's been reported right there in the eastbound lane so if you're traveling out to Seguin a little bit later this morning make sure to give those first responders plenty of room you can see traffic's getting a little bit busier out there as the minutes do go by but uh, yeah, we're not sure yet exactly how many vehicles were involved in this crash or if anyone was seriously hurt. So we hope everyone's doing OK. But you know, the good news here is the westbound lanes coming in from skiing aren't bad. But again, you can see traffic slowing right down there in the eastbound lanes. No buildup of the traffic out there just yet in terms of what we're seeing on the map. We're not seeing any red or yellow that's showing, but still a lot of folks are out there traveling. So make sure to give them plenty of room. Let's take a drive down over here because there is a stall that's causing some issues. It appears to be in the northbound lanes. However, TxDOT has reported this stall in the southbound lanes of 37 near Indian Hills. I'm not seeing any big buildup in the southbound lanes, but notice that orange and yellow that's right behind me. That's right there in the northbound lane. So as folks are making their way in from Pleasanton, let's say, just keep that in mind. You may see some slowdowns right there as you approach Loop 410. Wide look at the map really shows what we're going to see a little bit more now of a lot more of that red that's taking over. You can see at US 90, that same spot we see every single morning, folks heading in from Castroville. Well, you can expect some slowdowns already. 35 southbound if you're traveling near to Live Oak. We'll also see a little bit of a delay there, but that's always expected because of morning rush. We've just getting things started here, but again, big problem here at 10 at Escondido Creek. We are going to watch that area very closely. Hopefully there'll be a better update to report a little bit later on, but the morning has been a uh, pretty problematic to say the least. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Today is your last chance to vote early as the May 6th election is fast approaching. There is a lot on the ballot and depending on where you live from the San Antonio mayor seat to school bonds and propositions. So far, more than 57,000 people have voted. Those numbers are on track with last year's voting, but Bear County says they are prepared for even more voters over the next day. That's an increase of a little over 9%. So when you plan elections, when you look at it, you do your numbers and your algorithms, we plan for another 10% boost, and we're not seeing that yet. So we'll see. Maybe Election Day will be a big day for us. Again, early voting ends today. You can vote anytime between 8 in the morning and 8 in the evening. Election Day is this Saturday, and we have all the details on our website at kset.com. Also on KSAT.com, the San Antonio Police Union, SAPOA, is spending lots of money to fight Proposition A on the ballot, known as the Justice Charter to its supporters. The Charter Amendment attempts to decriminalize marijuana and abortion and expand the city's site and release program, among other things. So now a union-controlled PAC, or political action committee, is spending nearly as much as every other campaign combined in an effort to get San Antonians to vote no. We have more on what it's spending the money on and how much it's outspending their opposition, just click on this story on ksat.com.
In your morning medical news, advancements in the fight against the opioid epidemic, UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing has been busy training people across the state to use Narcan. Now, Narcan is that life-saving medication that can reverse an overdose, and that's why the department rolled out a simple three-minute stick figure video that shows how to use Narcan. The virtual training has been especially effective in harder-to-reach rural counties. That program has also sent Narcan to 73% of all Texas counties. The fight against opioids is something we've been following closely as a part of our series Fighting Fentanyl. You scan the QR code for more info. That will direct you to more information about fentanyl, what it is, how it affects your body, and how people who are addicted can get help. And coming up tonight on the Night Beat, our newest episode of Fighting Fentanyl is all about hope. A different program from UT Health San Antonio received a big grant to help people suffering from addiction. Tonight on the Night Beat, you'll learn how that will help people suffering from opioid addiction. Well, over in Washington, new calls for Congress to do something about America's debt ceiling. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, there's a warning from the U.S. Treasury that the U.S. could run out of funds in less than a month without a debt deal. The U.S. Treasury again urging lawmakers to do something about the $31.4 trillion debt ceiling. Since 1789, the United States has always paid its bills on time, and it must continue to do so. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen alerting Congress the agency could begin failing to cover all the nation's bills as early as June 1st. A dire deadline amid the ongoing showdown between the White House and the Republican-led House. President Biden drawing a hard line, calling on Congress to raise the debt limit without conditions. We pay our bills, and we should do so without reckless hostage taking from some of the mega Republicans in Congress. But opening the door for talks, reaching out to McCarthy and other top House and Senate leaders for a May 9th White House meeting. Sit down, negotiate it, get this off the table. Uh, let me tell you, the American people are, are not going to stand for Social Security being up in the air. That sit down would come less than a week after House Republicans passed a debt limit bill allowing a $1.5 trillion cap increase. The bill is passed. But that hike only in exchange for nearly $5 trillion in spending cuts to Biden budget priorities, including student debt relief, veterans programs, and school grants. The president warning that debt ceiling inaction will directly impact American households. It will lead to higher interest rates. Working people, middle class, and seniors would pay the price. And time is ticking. The House has only 12 legislative days left this month. And economists warn a default could plunge the U.S. and other nations into severe recessions. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 638, 68 degrees. After the break, we'll have a look at some of the stories trending right now on KSA.com. Welcome back. It's 642 right now on KSET.com. A look at school bond proposals. You know your money goes towards the local district you live in, but do you know how that district pays for those bond projects? Well, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars worth. So it's a topic of the new edition of KSET Explains, not only how bonds are paid for, but what you need to know about the wording you see on the ballot this year. HEB has announced the winners of the 21st annual HEB Excellence in Education Awards. Four of them were from San Antonio. Two winners came from Northeast ISD and one from Alma Heights ISD. Northside ISD won in the school board category. The winner selected from a pool of 58 finalists by judges that include former winners, school administrators, and university and community leaders. It's May and that means Mother's Day will be here soon. Consumer Reports track that prices on top products all year to know the best time to buy. From Bluetooth speakers to fitness trackers to backyard entertaining. And keep in mind on Memorial Day weekend you can pay no sales tax when you buy various appliances like refrigerators or dishwashers that can save energy or water. So you can read more about these stories on our website at kset.com. Uh, we just saw some flashing lights. I believe that was on I-10 at Escondido Creek. Was yes. that what it was? We have Peter? been keeping a very okay. close eye on that area. Uh, 
Mark. Let's get, I do want to get a little quick look around town because we've had our focal points on two different areas. Yes, 10 at Escondido Creek is one of them. We have this pretty serious crash that looks like it may be in the clearing stages, but before you get going, quick look there at 10 at the Y. You can see traffic's relatively light there, but starting to pick up, which is why we want folks to be aware anytime they see those flashing lights, move over or slow down. Roads are getting a little bit busier out there. We did also have an incident not too far from 35 at Ben's Engelman, an actual standoff along the access road. That's already cleared out, but again, problems still remain out there on the roadway. Crash has been reported right here at I-10 eastbound at, at near Loop 1604. The shot you saw was from Escondido Creek. What we are not seeing on the map is any buildup of traffic just yet, so that's good news. But if you're traveling in the area, best to just move over or slow down. Quick drive down over here again. We're still watching a stall at 37 southbound at Indian Hills, but the southbound lanes aren't too bad out there. It's really the northbound lanes where we're seeing a little bit more of that buildup, and it could just be because folks are making their way in from Pleasanton. So the drive may not be so pleasant there as you approach Loop 410. Wide look at the map does show the same thing that we're starting to see more of at this hour, guys. A little bit more of the slowdowns that are taking place. I see more of it uh, near Leon Valley along State Highway 151. That's going east. You may notice a little bit of orange and red that's building up there. And of course, the usual hotspot, as we all know, tends to be US 90. That's where we really start to see a little bit more of the traffic that builds up out there. But uh, yeah, we're going to keep a close eye on a few things throughout the morning, and I'm trying to get that shot back. Uh, 37 is uh, the shot here at 410. This is where we have that stall vehicle that's been reported, and you can see a lot of traffic that's moving through there. I'm going to have to give our friends at Transcat a call because it does look like uh, we're seeing more of the issues in the south, the northbound lanes as opposed to the southbound lanes. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just love you like looking and you see jet contrails flying over. Oh, oh, sometimes, oh, sometimes, you know, it's just that pencil thin line right there and there may be a couple of them sort of going different directions. This is a very cool one and when it's off, you know, closer to the horizon, it almost looks like a rocket going up or something, but that's a very cool shot there. Thank you very much for that one, Oscar. Appreciate that picture. Don't forget to send in your KSAC Connect pictures, and uh, hopefully we can get them on the air. Yesterday, we had a whole bunch of sunshine. Not today. Plenty of clouds out there. Plenty of humidity. A couple of showers down here to the south. Just a few of them around Kingsville, Corpus Christi, uh, maybe sliding in toward Mathis. There have been one or two of them out to the west as well. So we've got, with this flow coming in here, out of the uh, the southwest and then that's a loft in the atmosphere and then all the moisture coming in here from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. One or two showers are definitely going to be possible. New Braunfels has now dropped down to four miles visibility. So again, this area of fog is sort of continuing to grow and build westward, covering now a good chunk of Guadalupe County. And like I said, moving into New Braunfels, half mile visibility at Gonzales right now. Watch it around Randolph. Maybe Stinson Pleasanton as this continues to move its way westward. Temperatures are going to stay steady for the next couple of hours. And that 20% chance for little sprinkle out there, mist associated with some of the fog, no big deal really. We'll make it up into the upper 70s at noon and then top off today at 82 degrees. A lot of clouds out there, a little bit of sunshine, limited sunshine mixed in, and just that 10% chance for a stray shower or two, not anything of any consequence. Got to jump ahead to Thursday. Slightly better chance for a few showers during the day on Thursday, and then we go into Thursday night. And again, that's when we have to watch out for another round of strong, potentially severe storms. Once again, as time rolls on into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the atmosphere is going to be pretty volatile. So anything that does develop can become severe very easily. Friday, a couple of showers here and there, a chance for a few of those showers uh, overnight, Friday night, late. And then Saturday, we do have another shot at a few showers during the day and a few stronger thunderstorms. Looks like most of those may be further on down to the south. But again, a volatile atmosphere, so things are going to be popping or if they do pop turns of ear quite easily. This is what it looks like for Thursday right now. Isolated to scattered, strong to severe storms, high winds, hail, biggest threats with that. Here's what's going on. This is the, the big low and this is actually producing snow and freezing temperatures up there in the northern plains and northern Great Lakes. That's what brought the front through here on Friday night. Gave us the beautiful weekend. Great weather yesterday that moves on out. This next low sort of hanging out out to the west. That's going to keep us in the southwesterly flow. Keep a lot of clouds around here. We stay very warm and humid. It doesn't really move through to throw any fronts through. So we had a couple of them in the past few weeks. Sort of a little gift because we don't usually see those that much in the month of April. And again, that thing just sort of sits out there and keeps us in the same weather pattern 
all the way in through the uh, the weekend. So the forecast today again upper 70s at noon. A shower is possible. Watch out for some fog around the area this morning, especially east of San Antonio 82. A shower or two here and there and then tomorrow pretty much the same situation. We'll start off on the uh, warm, humid side with some mist, a little fog here and there. Thursday, that's going to be a better chance for a few showers during the day and then especially Thursday night, a couple of showers Friday and then more on Saturday. And again, the thing we'll have to watch out for that volatile atmosphere, something pops up, they can get strong really easily. Okay, and that's Thursday night for the strong. Yes, that'll be the first opportunity for that Thursday night. All right, thank you, Mike. Just about 10 till 68 degrees. Let's look out there with a live cam looking nice right now. 68 degrees. You don't have to worry about the storms when you leave for work this morning. We're going to have one last weather check on weather and traffic right after the break. Good morning. Coming up here on a Tuesday, the deadly dust storm in Illinois. At least six people killed, dozens of vehicles piled up. They had 40 mile per hour winds just combined with an unfortunate circumstance where the farm and the fields had just been cleared. We're right there on the scene. We'll be tracking also the newest threat uh, headed for that area. Then this morning, the debt limit showdown. What a default could mean for Social Security, military salaries, and 401ks. And then a new study on women and heart health and the new report out this morning about the loneliness epidemic in America. Dr. Ashton is here to discuss it all. You don't want to miss it on GMA. It felt like a war zone. This morning, witnesses are describing the chaotic scene along this interstate in Illinois, where a dust storm is blamed for a multiple vehicle pileup, resulting in at least six deaths and dozens of injuries. Oh man, there's so many wrecked cars over here. The pileup involving more than 70 cars, trucks, and tractor trailers. We started to hear um, the booms from the gasoline tanks and it was one right after the other. One driver says she was driving toward the pileup when a motorcyclist warned her to stop after seeing the carnage ahead. His motorcycle was covered with the dust. He was covered with the dust and he said had he had um, had to bust out a couple of um, uh, windows in a lady's car to pull her out. Cars and trucks were piled up on both the north and southbound lanes of Interstate 55 south of Springfield. The rare dust storm sweeping through central Illinois, leading to zero visibility conditions. The National Weather Service says newly plowed farm fields contributed to all that dust. Nothing in my 24 year career that I can recall having something as severe as this. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Just about five till seven. Check back with Stephen Cavazos about the situation off of I-10. Yeah, this one has been lingering around for quite a while now, guys. This crash has taken a while to clear for first responders, but take a look there. We still have uh, at least two lanes that are blocked off, but I do see a tow truck out there on the scene now that it's gotten a little bit brighter out there. Uh, this crash is reported in the eastbound lanes of I-10, not far from Loop 16 to 4. This is just a shot at Escondido Creek. Now, we can see that things are moving uh, pretty slowly through there, but what our map is not catching is any big significant buildup. We're not seeing any red or yellow out there. So this is just something to be mindful of as you get the commute rolling out to Seguin this morning. Move over or slow down. Hopefully that'll clear within the next few minutes. But uh, something that's not cleared yet is the stalled vehicle there at 37 southbound at Indian Hills. But I've not seen any issues in the southbound lanes. The buildup is really taking place in those northbound lanes and that has been going on for a little while as well. Make sure to check your vehicles before you get the commute rolling. Wide look at the map does show what we're going to start to see more of. A lot more of that red take over our screen. But uh, I saw the sun was peeking out a little bit so that's some good news. Yeah, that's going to be really limited this morning. Got lots of clouds hanging around here right now. We do have fog. It's uh, invading New Braunfels. Watch it as you head off to the east on 10 and up 35. A couple little sprinkly showers, just one or two of them here and there. That's possible today. Mid upper 60s, low 70s and very consistent temperatures. Ton of humidity out there. We're going to make it in the upper 70s today at noon. 82 high temperature, maybe a shower. I wouldn't count on it uh, tomorrow about the same thing. We'll have to watch out Thursday night for some uh, potentially stronger storms and it gets hot and humid this weekend. All right, we'll prepare. Good month to be extra weather aware, right, That's Mike? True. Yes, indeed. We will be. Thank you, Mike. Have a great day. Good Morning America is coming up next. Bye, guys.